came out right. 0.53. And again, this is like a resistance, so it should be in ohms. So we've got that. What's the name of this concept? The impedance should be in ohms. By the way, we know we're not at the resonant frequency here. How do we know we're not at the resonant frequency? What, what would have happened at the resonant frequency? The two reactances would have canceled out. That's right. Well, we already knew that these were not the same, so we're not at the resonant frequency. won't help too much to focus on the capacitor because there would be two unknowns. We don't know the voltage in the capacitor or the current in the capacitor. Now the question here was... Well, if we know that we, we're looking for the current, right? Right. And we know the voltage... So we can't do the voltage at 120 then? The voltage where? At the... Eventually at the capacitor. It's true that it would be there uh, eventually. Yeah, I think that would probably work. So let's do this two ways, and I think you're right. We'll get the same answer. So first of all, the question here was asking us for the current in the circuit. Well, let's start by just focusing on the source. Let's figure out the current in the source here. Well, what's the equation that we can use for the source here? Well. The reason that why I want to focus on the source Yeah, we can't focus on the capacitor. That won't work. We can't focus on the capacitor. We have to focus on the source. Why? Because I know the voltage in the source. What's the, what's the average voltage at this source? Uh, That's the information they told us. Is it 120 AC outlet? which means the average current is 120. I hope that's the average. Let's check. Got it. So they said it's 120 current, which means they're telling us really that the average current. No. Right. They're asking us the current. And they're telling us that this voltage is 120 volts. Well, let's use Ohm's law. How does the output? That's just the convention. When people talk about a 120 volt AC outlet, it's conventional to treat that as the average, unless they say it was 120 peak. Mm, yeah. Now, here's our Ohm's law. Now, we're going to be focusing here on the, the generator because that's the thing that we know the voltage for. We cannot assume that the capacitor is ever going to get to 120 volts. That was the basic problem with your first suggestion. At first that seemed right, but we can't assume the capacitor will ever get to 120 volts. So, or, or well, we, it'll maybe get there, but we don't know that its average will be 120 volts. But we know that the average of the generator is 120 volts. Now this is what we're trying to figure out. We have to figure out what's the appropriate thing to put in for R. Well, maybe I shouldn't even have written R because, of course, this doesn't have a resistance. But we want to ask, what is the concept for the resistance that's perceived by the generator? Is it the Z? Yeah, that's what the Z is. The Z takes into account all the various sources of resistance. So maybe I shouldn't have never put the R here in the first place. I should have just put in Z from the beginning. Since we're focusing on the source, it's going to perceive Z. And that was the purpose of all our work. We figured out what Z was. 
and you got 22 er, yeah 226 yeah. all right this is the key problem solving technique that you might have to use on the exam this step here so again the key point here was we can use these types of Ohm's law equations but you have to use the appropriate resistance concept For example, if we were going to work with this resistor, we would just use R for its resistance. If we were going to work with this inductor, we would use XL for its reactance. If we were going to work with the capacitor, we would use XC for its reactance. But if we're going to work with the power source, we could use the impedance, because the impedance takes into account all the various sources of resistance that the power source is going to perceive, so to speak. Now, why is it that we had to focus on the power source here and we couldn't focus on anything else? Because they gave us information about the power source. They gave us the power source's voltage. What would have gone wrong if we had followed your first idea and focused on this? It seems like a good idea because everyone has the same current. Everyone has the same current because they're still in series. But the problem is we don't know what the average voltage is. We, so we do know this. We've already figured this out. But we don't know what the average voltage is in the capacitor. We cannot assume that it's the same as the average in this source over here. Remember that when things are in series, their currents are the same. But their voltages don't have to be the same. And there's not even anything that says that these averages have to be the same. They could be totally different. So it's OK to try using this equation, but we don't have enough information. What we have enough information for is the generator over here. Mm -hmm. As we'll see if we can finish off this problem, or are we done already? Well, before we do that, now, let's figure out the average voltage in the capacitor. They didn't ask us this, but they should have. Now let's figure out what's the average voltage in the capacitor. that out well. Good. Now, the important thing you saw is that you used this 226. But wait a second. That was the current in the generator. How do we know we can use that for the capacitor? Because they're in series. It's only because these are in series that we can use the same number. So we can never assume that a number for one device is the same as for the other. We have to decide. Well, when things are in series, they have the same currents. If this, you, you had asked me earlier, what about doing parallel problems? Well, unfortunately, we won't have time today for parallel problems. But when things are in parallel, it's the voltages that are the same and the currents that are different. And when things are in series, it's the currents that, that are the same and the voltages that are different. So the problem solving techniques are pretty similar. Well, here we can assume everyone has the same current. So once we've figured out the current from the source, we can apply that over here. And now we've seen, as I promised before, we could not have assumed that the average voltage in the capacitor was the same as the average voltage in the source. This had 120, and this only has an average of 36. So things would have gone very wrong if we just plugged the 120 in over here. Again, when things are in series, you can't assume same voltages. You can only assume the same currents. Your method would have worked if they were in parallel. When they're in parallel, we could have assumed the same voltages. So now you're kind of seeing how we use all the reactances and impedances here and the, these forms of Ohm's law. You have to do this very step by step. Now we could also find the average voltage across the inductor. How would we find the average voltage here? Same, like using the same current but the different resistance. But the s different reactants we figured out here. That's right. And we could also figure out the average voltage across the resistor because we also know its resistance. So now we can work all that out. So it's important to use a diagram like this where you put separately the numbers for each device. The big mistake people make is confusing the, vi the devices in their head. Each device needs to have its own set of numbers. My picture here is already getting kind of messy, but each device needs to have its own set of numbers so you can separate them all. 
and they each have their own equation. For the resistor, V equals IR. For the inductor, V equals IXL. For the capacitor, V equals IXC. And for the source, V equals I times Z, depending on what's the appropriate concept for resistance. Now, at this point, we basically solved the entire circuit. Now we can figure out everything in the circuit. Now, this problem was harder than it seemed because they step by step took us through the steps. They could have just said at the beginning, here's the information, now figure out the voltage across the capacitor, and we would have had to done all of those steps in the right order to get to here. So it would be a good exercise to try to just start from the beginning and work out everything you can figure out on your own without getting all the leading questions along the way. Because I think this is a pretty typical way that AC circuits are tested with these concepts. <coughs> 